today with the man, the myth, the legend, Brian O'Halloran, Dante Hicks himself. What's going on, brother? Good to see you, Alex. Thanks for having me on the show. How's it going, man? Good morning. Um, Alex. Chapman, nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you as well. He's got an interview show on YouTube. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm joined with Trevor Furman. I did not expect this at all. What's up, brother? How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm good. And so, um, yeah, um, I, what's up? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't all right, really good talk. I'm joined today with... Marilyn Gigliotti, Veronica herself. What's going on? Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you for having me here. Clerks 3, absolutely adored it. Kevin grows as a person, and he thought there'd be more, at least one more story of these characters. I mean, it's been uh, 15 years since we made Clerks 2, and everybody thought, oh, that's a great little button on these characters. Let's check in, check in with them at least one more chance. And it was so brilliant that uh, in working that story through, seeing where the relationship between Dante and Randall are at, where Becky is in his life, where Veronica and I have been, and Jay and Silent Bob, obviously, and bringing them out to this kind of station in their life, which is really cool. But yet keeping it to that smaller storyline that was the original Clerks, I thought, I thought was brilliant. So, um, yeah, um, I, what's up? <laughs> So I didn't All right, really. Good talk. Uh, no, <laughs> no, you. Uh, you've been doing conventions what for what for about a year now? Yeah, five, uh, 12, 13 months. Yeah. Have you been liking the or, or hating the uh, convention world so far? I've been loving it until this very moment. It was um, just absolutely amazing to see you in Clerks Three. Thank you. The only problem is I, I just wish you were in it more. You know, I feel like I feel like Kevin could have written it to where like you were more a part of it. You know. Well, thank you. Like, I, I really really appreciate because I've heard that a lot mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it, it, it's nice to know that the fans enjoy my character enjoy what I've done with the character that they want to see more screen time of me oh, so um, I you know I feel that right here um, and the screenings that I've gone to on during the convenience tour as well as as soon as I come on and just hear the audience with the applause and the love it just kind of like, ah. Oh. It's the best feeling in the world. It, it really right? is. There were, there were just no words. When they did Clerks 2, it's like I would have hoped to have been in that as well. Um, and I always say, it's like, Veronica could have come through that movie's door and exactly. just sort of without knowing, you know, that, that he was going to be behind there. I, I'm just grateful that he did bring me back for Clerks 3. And uh, grateful that I was able to play her again. And it was just so much fun and just really something that showed my growth mm -hmm. in the last 28 years and uh, a different side of her as well. Of course, with the original Clerks, you know, like there there was no ad living or I, I imagine you guys didn't you know, like get to really do much like no. like give much creative input at all. But, you know, you said that with Clerks 2, you're given, you know, more creative freedom to more creative input into your characters and like you said that you got the most freedom with Clerks 3. So like which uh, what would you say? Um, What's your fa favorite like um, creative contribution that you gave to your to your character to the movie? The delivery, you know, when Kevin writes it, there are words on a page. But uh, I'm I'm glad that the vocal texture that is Jeff to do Randall was spot on to what a Randall should sound like. Oh, exactly. The fact that you know the the character of a Dante is kind of like kind of whiny and oh my god, and I don't know how that would be played with other people in it. So knowing that, uh, we added to that. And yeah, with the third movie, we were able to play and, and, and build in some more of our own thoughts about the character where they would be at. And it's always great. Savages are always sticking gum in the locks. So I wrote it into the script to be the reason the shutters are closed all day. That way we could shoot at night and pretend it's day out. Of course, you know, like with, with the plot of Clerks 3, you know, like there's so many references to things that happen in real life with the original Clerks, of course. So like, was there anything that that Kevin didn't use or, or, or utilize that you're thinking like like damn Kevin you didn't you didn't use this or reference this he's really good at self editing yeah uh, even with the filming itself like there are there are two or three scenes uh, 
uh, from this clerk's three that were cut that didn't you know in his his eyes either didn't advance the story or just for time purposes we needed to trim out and, oh, and some see. of them included some pretty famous names oh, in really? film in, ge in general uh, you'll see it uh, if you get the the blu-ray of the dvd I'm, I'm sure it's on the deleted scenes you see what i'm talking about where you're like oh man I'm, I'm, i understand why you cut it but at the same time like oh it was a fun it's a fun element that we should have kept in it i've been loving it until this very moment oh really no, i'm just kidding ah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm sorry no it's been really fun it's really meeting everybody and you know just hanging out with the bands and stuff like that holy shit man i love clerks three thanks man like you were so good so um i heard that the idea of you wearing the, the the costumes and everything like wasn't in the script right it definitely was not originally planned to go that crazy yeah. <laughs> some of it was like me just joking around and then it like turned into stuff but i i can't i don't want to take undue credit right like all the hair and makeup and wardrobe people were amazing it was all their you know their creative uh creative skill and everything that was what they're, they're responsible for the looks I, maybe one, a few of them were like the germ of the idea was some dumb joke I made but those were the actual artists was there anything uh, that was that was um, cut from from what you shot or, or, or did Kevin pretty much use everything he used yeah. everything um, okay. yeah and we pretty much stuck to the script there's one thing that I'm hoping that makes it into a blooper type of situation. When the camera was turned around on Brian and Jeff, when I come storming into the convenience store, who the fuck do you people think you are? Veronica. What is this dingy, tawdry trash that makes me out to be some slutty sex maniac? It's just a movie I'm making about my life, and I thought it'd be fun for you to play yourself in it. Oh, you did? And I throw the script at Jeff. You are fucking sick. Hey. I kind of missed where I was aiming, and um, but he went with it, and I was just like trying to make sure that uh, I did not lose it, and in, in, as far as like laughing at what happened, and, and where did so, it land? A little lower than it should have. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh man, that would have been that would have been great if they would have used. Why didn't they use that? It would have been. I know. That? It would have been so oh, great man. if he if he used that. And, and it was a good take. It wasn't ruined because of the fact that I just misaimed or anything like that. Um, if anything, he, he used it, and um, I, yeah. But I hope it really makes it into the to the bloopers. <laughs> I think it probably will. It's like, how can that not? not you know? yeah. Of course, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure their reaction is very genuine. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or something yes, like that. exactly. With um, madness and the method. Um, oh, right on. Love that movie. It was awesome. Of course, obviously, like you're not, you know, you're you're not that character, but you know, you're playing a version of yourself, you know, and like a and like an alternate reality kind of thing. I don't want to call Brian O'Halloran. You know what happens when you call Brian O'Halloran? Hey, man, pussy, man. He talks about pussy for like two hours and shit. I'm 46. I'm done talking about that. It was playing him, like you know, that character uh, in that movie more challenging than than usual because you're playing a version of yourself, or not really? No, not really. What it was was I, I did a pretty much. A an extreme self-absorbed <laughs> kind of uh, character that you see a lot in this industry. I'm not even supposed to be here today. Not even supposed to be here today. That's right, motherfucker. I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> Every fucking time, it kills me, man. Right? I'm Which sure I'm not yeah. like that at all. <laughs> but it was great to take this kind of like really douchey kind of way <laughs> of attitude of being a producer and a director of a, a Hollywood film and what it would do to someone's ego and, and self-esteem, especially knowing me as a person throughout the years and seeing me as a regular person and just seeing this kind of like, oh, look at this guy yeah. kind of thing. It made that ending of that movie, the payoff, even more rewarding for the audience. So uh, it was great working for Jay. Jay is a director. Director was a lot. Was a dream to work with. I wish you um, more. Because we've had known each other for nearly 30 years, it was really great, you know, to just throw me like, hey, we, we try some of this, and oh, you know, let's do this. And I knew exactly what he meant. And, and the crew was, was really respectful and, and really cool that worked with them. Uh, we shot most of that film was shot in England, and they were dubbing it as uh, as uh, you know California. So it was good to see him get in his acting chops, and I think he did a great job. And I, I look forward to working with him again, actually. I got you. Yeah, ho hopefully, hopefully he makes more movies. Yeah, like, that was definitely a that was definitely.
definitely a strong um, directorial debut. Absolutely. So, and so uh, many names in it, you know, bringing in yeah. Stan Lee and all these great people that got, you know, that helped out with the film was uh, fun to be with. That was his last cameo, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. That's his last live cameo. Oh, man. Don't you know Jason Mewes? Jason Mewes? That smoochy boochy guy? I never met him, but boy, I heard he's a knucklehead. Was was making this film more challenging than than it than it was making the second one, or would you say it was about the same? This one was more challenging in a sense for me, just because there were so many costumes. So it was yeah. like getting in and out of them and all that stuff. But gotcha. they, they were both pretty easy, you know, experiences. I mean, they were very fun, and everybody else worked hard so that I didn't have to. Actors don't really work particularly hard. I don't know if you knew, I don't know if you knew that. Really? No, it's like the easiest job in the world. Damn, I want to be an actor then. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't I wouldn't go that, that far. Don't do that? No, nah, it's not a great... I didn't say it was a great job. I just said they don't work hard. I gotcha. Were you um, able to give much creative input into your character? You know, or not really? It's funny. It's a hard thing to explain. It's not like in the... Well, so they know better. They know him obviously a lot longer than I have, but... Yeah. In Clerks 2, like, it's not like he would just sh shoot down your idea if you had one. It just was... I don't know, the script was in a more formal state kind of from the beginning. It's kind of hard to explain. We definitely did more sort of improv -y stuff on three. Still not a lot, but more than two. But it's not like, I don't know, maybe it was just because I was, I, I'm older and I knew them better by that point, so I was more comfortable just throwing out dumb ideas. But, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know if that really answers your question. But yeah, we definitely had more like, m more stuff that kind of came from the cast that wasn't in the original original script in Clerks 3 than in Clerks 2. I gotcha. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I want to just, I'm just trying to stress that it wasn't like Kevin was, as long as I've known him anyway, he's never been like, fuck you, <laughs> do only my lines. It's just, I gotcha. Yeah. Like he's very open to, yeah. to other people's ideas. Totally. Well, that's good. That's good that he's, I mean, like I figured he was that kind of director. I just. Yeah, he's a good um, Yeah. Was there anything uh, that was, that was cut from the movie that you were like, really Kevin, why'd you cut it? Yes. There's one thing in particular from the third one where and this kind of goes along with what we were just talking about um, in the funeral scene at the very end spoiler alert uh, I don't know if you remember but the way that the, the scene opens up is we got this crane shot that comes in on I care on Elias so we had a crane in the graveyard that day you remember that scene where Randall runs over to Jane Bob and he's like uh, Dante needs help or whatever and they're like Who's, who the fuck is Dante he's like what do you mean the other guy who's not me who's Dante the fuck do you mean Dante the other guy, the guy in the quick stop who's not me? Wait, I thought his name was Sergio. And Jay's like, I thought that guy's name was Sergio. Sergio. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that joke, and I, I always did. laughed at that. And then, so when we were we were getting Jay's coverage mm -hmm. uh, in the graveyard that day, and I was I happened to be standing near, and we were just waiting and bored, and I was like, you know, it'd be funny uh, if at the end of this scene, I was talking to Jay, like, if you got down on your knees, and the, the crane sh shot is gonna like pull up and you just go, Sergio! <laughs> and we shot it and Kevin didn't put it in the movie yeah. because he just felt like it wasn't tonally appropriate, which oh, it isn't, man. but it's super funny. <laughs> he yeah. just felt like it, it, it cheapens the moment kind of, and he's right, he's totally right, but I think that's what I found funny about it. I recently actually had a short film that I directed make its directorial debut oh, really? at Kevin's Film Festival. And it's called The Mother's Love. I am, right now we're kind of doing the festival circuit. We're gonna figure out, you know, once we're done with the festival circuit, what we'll do and where we'll show it so that the masks can actually see Oh, I see. What I can do. Now, I'm very proud of what we did. So what's going on? What's going on? Would I do some things differently? Absolutely, because yeah. it was my first time. Um, and I look at certain things, and I'm like, oh, I could have done a few more things, because, you know, we wore many hats when we are doing these little independent short films, and so I was also the set director, and, you know... Doing a lot of different things at once. Doing a lot once. of different things, so I was like, yeah, there were things that I would have, you know, kind of changed a little bit, but... I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Well, hey, you know, like, it, it was your first try. I actually made my own movie. And, you know, like, watching it, even though I'm the one who edited the thing, I'm just like, man, I would have done this differently. I would have done this differently. Right. But, so, like, uh, how long is the short? It's only a little over 12 minutes long. Okay. So, with credits, probably around 12 minutes without the credits. So, That's um, cool. And then it was a group of friends. Uh, we all kind of got together and created our own content. Um, so two of the actresses that are in the film, they were also producers, and one of them was a uh, writer of, this, of the piece. I'll definitely check it out once it gets released. What would you say is the most um, 
challenging aspect of working on this third film compared to, you know, the first two films and, you know, like Kevin's other movies? The most challenging aspect to, for this third one, I would say, is uh, to get the, the feeling and the dialogue that Kevin had written in these uh, challenging moments for Dante in this film and doing the emotion right, getting the feeling of someone in that situation right. I didn't want to disrespect, A, the work that Kevin put into it and the emotion he put into writing it. B, acting opposite Rosario Dawson, and you, you want to make sure you could be somewhere near that, that it doesn't look jarring in, in working with her. Yeah. And then see the fact that there are people who have gone through what you'll see Dante has gone through in this film, that uh, they they connect with it. They go, I was there, or I've been there, or I know someone who's got to that point in their life. Uh, so that was the toughest challenge for me, and that's the first thing I worked on immediately, was getting those moments right. I came to the first read-through, and uh, Kevin even tells a story about uh, we get to the, the certain emotional part at the end of the movie uh, for Dante where he's, he's doing a pretty long monologue. And I remember it just, you know, we get to that point and I'd been, we'd all been following through the script the entire time because it's just a read through. And I just remember I closed the script and everybody else closed, you know, was looking at me like, what? And then Kevin's like, oh shit, something's about to go down and boom, you get to do it. So it was a lot of fun. I just wanted to say that. Um I've been a fan of these films my whole life. Right you know, Clerks is probably my favorite comedy ever made. Right on. And uh, I just wanted to say that you know your your performance was just, just spectacular. I'm not just saying this because you're here. Like I'm serious. Like I, honestly, I was kind of thinking like, shit. You know, you better do a good job. And like you were just <laughs> to be honest with you. That's but funny. You that, were... In my head, I was doing the exact same thing. <laughs> shit, I better do a good job. But, but you know, you just you, you knocked it out of the park, man. Thanks. I'm serious. I like you're fan that. you're fantastic. Thank you, brother. And I just like, that. what are your thoughts on? Um, how Kevin decided to, to, to end your story. We all grew up together with all these characters. Kevin growing up, meaning writing these characters, us making these characters, but also then the fact that the fan group gets to grow with these characters again, which makes that payoff of the, you know, how we end with Clerks 3 is a, a more emotional ending than people would expect. I think uh, if we couldn't build them through all these years of enjoying these characters in this viewist universe, the payoff that we have in this Clerks 3 wouldn't have been as strong as it has been. So go and give me to a bone to carry a bone my The fact that I got to play this character in many iterations throughout the decades, and Jane Sons Bob Strike Back, and the show the reboot, stuff like that, back to cartoon, um, it felt, it felt right in a way. It felt um, uh, the respect that the character had, it, it was hitting a home point to people's pain. I think people all around you, sitting down, has, has some sort of pain in them at that moment. Um, you never know on a good day or a bad day what people really are going on, what's going on in their lives every day. And I thought this was a great representation of the pain that Dante was carrying after the loss of his wife and his unborn child, that I, as the, the actor in me, felt it an amazing challenge to portray that pain and to portray that love that both Dante and Randall had for each other and what happens in the end when, like he said, ne never let the sun set on an argument. And, and so that all being said, I kind of went, I'm gonna miss the fuck out of playing Dante in this universe alive and whatnot. Now, it doesn't mean you can never come back. I mean, we had a ghost Becky, why not a ghost Dante talk? I mean, you know, it's a random, who knows? So that respect, I'm very happy with how it's gone. And the fact that he gave me such incredibly beautiful words to scream at Jeff um, <laughs> was really, really touching. And I'm glad I was able to, to give it the respect it's earned, first for the character, secondly for the author who, who wrote them, and then the fact that the respect that y'all had the love for that Dante character for this long is something I had to do and do it well. I 
never cry during movies. Right. I honestly cried at the end of Clerks 3. That means you cared like, over seriously. all these years. That means I did enough to make you empathize with yes. the character, and I'm glad that you appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. Like, and you truly gave us something special. This 30-year journey. Thank you. It was amazing. So, I appreciate that. So thank you. No problem. Well, it's good seeing you, and you thank too. you for having me on, and I look forward to seeing this. I really appreciate you giving me a few minutes, man. Of My nice name, to meet you. Not, nice to meet you, too. I'm Alex. Thank yeah. you for coming on. Take it easy, everybody. Yeah, hell yeah. We'll see you guys later. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, guys. You're welcome. watching, and we will see you later. Say bye, Brad. Take care. <laughs> Peace.